guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming, a Sunny Mountain Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings, a Dean's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go! Alright. She was gone as quickly as she had appeared, but given her enthusiasm, I doubted, the, I doubted that was the last time I would hear from her. <laughs> oh, you're right. More free time. What should I do? Uh, oh, get some well-deserved rest. Yeah, meet with Remy, meet with Anna, meet with Laura, meet with Bryce, meet with Sebastian. Let's meet with Sebastian. Can you date Sebastian? I'm kind of curious. Hmm. Hey, Sebastian, this is Keegan. Huh, you just hung up. You're still... You're still here? I'm still on the clock, you know. Huh, well, I'm glad you take my security so seriously. Just doing my job, sir. Anyway, did you need anything? It's just... It's just pretty boring when I have to spend all day on my own. I don't really know anyone here yet, so I don't know where I could go or what I could do for fun. Well, if it were earlier, I could have... I could have shown you around town and given you the tour, but it's getting dark outside, and I think most places are closed by now. Let me think. Do you like being outdoors? Yeah! <laughs> oh, me too! What do you think about camping? You want to go camping? Right now? Well, it might not be my best idea, but I'm not sure there's much else we could do at, the t at this time. Uh, would it even be okay for us to just go outside? I'm supposed to be guarding you, you know. Technically, I'm still on the clock, but camping would be much more fun than you just staying inside and me guarding your door, don't you think? Besides, I'm supposed to accompany you wherever you go. You're not our prisoner, so of course you're free to go wherever you want. If you wanted to spend a night outside and experience the countryside, not only could I not stop you, but I'd be obliged to come with you. So what do you say? Sure. Well, let me just grab a few things. Yay, camping. Oh, that's pretty. Well, we're here. I'm surprised we even got a spot this late after what you told me. Well, if a member of the police force and someone who is as important as you are, it's not really surprising. They probably regard it as an honor to be hosting us. I mean, this isn't exactly like luxury. It's like, a, it's a few, some crates, some torches, a table with, is that one chair? No, oh, there's a chair right there behind him, I think. So, this is it? No tents or anything? Oh, tent camping would have been a bit more complicated to set up the last minute. Is there any other form of camping? What you're seeing here is cave camping. They show you they're like, they're like, run, they're run like hostels, but you sleep in caves like this one. Oh, well, at least we got some furnishing. I could use a few sleeping bags, though. If you wanted a comfy bed, you should have stayed in your room. This here is the real deal. Yep, just us and nature itself. We even have some natural lighting in here. So much for the real deal. We could just sit in the dark if you prefer that. No, I think this will do. Have you never gone camping before? Okay, now. Hmm. This is a first. Let's make it a good one, then. You know, I was kind of nervous when I met you the first time. I could tell. It was quite a thing to hear that humans were going to visit our world, but when I met you and it turned out you were just like an ordinary person, that really threw me off. Didn't you meet Reza before? Actually, no. Everything about your visit is clouded in secrecy, so I didn't get to hear much about Reza from Maverick before I met you. I see. So, are you one of those who expected me to act a certain way because I'm human? Actually, that didn't have much to do with it. Any high-profile guest would have made me nervous, especially if I was in charge of keeping them safe. I also happen to be the newest guy on the force, so I didn't exactly want this to turn into a career under right, right there. Oh. Yeah. Good point. How long have you been on the force? They didn't assign the rookie with the rookie to me, did they? Just because I'm the newest guy doesn't mean I'm a rookie. It's been a few years now. I suppose that means you don't get many new recruits. Not here, at the very least. This isn't just a small town, so we don't really need them all that often. I got lucky when I got this position because I figured out that because I figured there'd be more competition from the locals. Locals, don't you live here? 
I live here now, but I actually grew up in a small farming village that mostly consisted of runners like me. Runners? Oh, that's just what we call our species sometimes. We've got pretty powerful legs. I can see that. Are there many villages where the inhabitants are mostly the same species? For sure. It's mostly smaller ones, though. The bigger they get, the more variety you'll find. I see. I only have my hometown to compare, but from what I've heard, there are other villages that are fairly similar. They can only survive like that if they lead much simpler lives or if they focus on a certain industry that species is good at. So your species is good at farming. Better than the Earth Dragons, at least, even though they come in handy pulling the plows. Why did you decide to become a police officer? I just wanted to see what's out there beyond our vegetable fields and if whatever was there was like the stories I'd heard. Is it? Oh yes, it's been great! Now that you mention it, I don't really know much about this town either. Well, what would you like to know? Can you tell me about the land? The land? Well, I hear they have fertile soil. Not as fertile as my hometown, though. I was talking more about if they have any sort of industry. Oh, I see. This town is actually quite unique, because even though it's fairly small, it has its own production facility. With that, we basically have our own full production chain. So, your one factory is everyone's pride and joy here? In a way, yes. It makes us fairly independent and keeps everything local. Foundations or secrets I should know about this town. Hmm. You can tell me about the people. They're a friendly bunch, for the most part. Of course, I also meet some unpleasant fellows in my line of work, but luckily those seem to be the minority. It was also a bit of culture shock when I initially came here with all the different species living here together. But my police... <clears throat> excuse me, my police training took care of that. Well, you have some need Secrets? This town doesn't really have any secrets. Not that I know of, at the very least. Maybe you just don't belong to the inner circle yet. I think as a member of the police force, I'd get to see everything there is to see. Either way, I don't think there's anything that special about our town. He kind of took me under his wing when I came here, and I've been working with him ever since. Pun not intended. I found it a bit weird but that the big shot himself had to show the country bunk in the ropes, though. I thought he saw it as a challenge or that he wanted to scare me away, but honestly, he's been great. Everything here, everyone here trusts him a lot. What's it like? What's it like having, what's it like having so many different species on the forest? Compared to my hometown, it's been quite an interesting change. On one hand, you get all kinds of different people with all kinds of different strengths, abilities, and backgrounds that can make your work so much easier. On the other hand, it also creates all kinds of new problems that I never would have expected. I won't forget the first time I had to follow a shoplifter who also happened to be a flyer. But hey, I'm not the only one who's been who's been new here. What are your impressions? Good? Bad? Ugly? Good? Bad? I'm the guy with a gun. A comment. It's been fun so far. Fun? That's not something I'd expect you to say after we showed you a corpse on your first day. Hey, if Bryce said it had to, had to be done, then it's part of the job. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was a good idea by Bryce to take you to the crime scene, though. I know he's a hands-on guy, but that really was a bit much. Pun not intended. If you need my help, I'm glad to give it. Fostering goodwill and all that. Well, at least you don't seem to be traumatized from the experience. Anyway, how about some fun? What kind of fun are you talking about? I bought some playing cards. A staple for any camping trip. I see. What are we playing? It's a little game called Bastion Breach. You ever heard of it? Can't say I have. We often play it in the break room to pass the time. It's good fun, though things can get quite heated sometimes. Let me go over the rules. Sure. Oh, okay. As you can see, each of us starts with all cards of a given suit in their hands. Your diamonds and I'll be hearts. <laughs> huh. What you see in the center is the middle row, which is a line of shuffled cards from another suit. This way, each game is this way. Each game is going to be unique since the middle row always changes between games. Now, this is how the game works. We'll play around for each card in the middle row, starting with the one you see at the very left. During each round, we both decide which card to, which card to play and put it there, face down like this. 
Once we both have, once we have both, we've both played a card, we flip them over. The highest card wins the round, and whoever played it gets a point. To clarify, two is the lowest card, and the king is the highest. The ace is a special card. It beats every face card, but it will lose against any number card. Now the card from the middle row also counts, so it's possible that neither of us will get the point for a round. If there's a tie, no clear winner between the three cards, and the middle row is the highest card, no player will get a point for that round. However, the next round will, get the, will give the winner an extra point to make up for it. At the end, the player with the most number of points wins the game. Did you get all that? Yep. So this game is all about bluffing and mind games. We can always see what cards have been played, so each of us knows exactly what the other player has left. All right, are you ready? Sure. Don't worry, I'll go easy on you. Take all the time you need to make your selection. Round one. Fight! Oh, well, a five for the first card makes for an interesting start. You could try to surpass it and play something higher, but if I'm going to do the same, you don't know how high I would go to not only beat the five, but your higher card as well. Alternatively, you could count on me trying to beat a higher card and play a low one instead, thus making me waste mine. What's it going to be, Keegan? Let's see, I think I will go with a four. I think I'll go with a four. Huh. As you can see, I played a lowly two just to see what would happen. You need to know your opponent and their tendencies are just as important in analyzing potential moves and strategies. A tie. I guess we both tried to do the same thing here. Round two. Fight! The king presents us with an interesting conundrum, especially when getting him early when most cards are still available. I'll let you figure this one out, though. Hmm. I don't want to play my ace yet. Because an ace will lose to a number card, but it beats all the face cards, so... Let's do a... Hmm. King is a good card. But I, mm, do a maybe a five, do a two. Fuck it, do a two. Looks like a tie. Of course, the only card that beats a king is the ace, but playing it here would be a rookie mistake. It's definitely a safer play to just get rid of a low card here. Um, hmm. Do a seven. Ah, shit. My point. Round four. Huh. How about a uh, eight? Damn. Now well, he's getting rid of all of his... Get rid of his... I guess it looks like he's getting rid of his good cards. Don't worry, you can still win. Yeah, no kidding. I'm, you're, I'm playing my low cards. Let's do a... Nine. No. Nope. Yeah, that's a lot of your good cards already gone. So he's already gotten rid of his, uh, yeah. All right, y'all, I'm going to continue this in the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to your ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access for not safe for more content as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!